This is the hardest part about taking your goats hunting. Come on, man. Get off, get off of those. No, not those. Get off of those. The hardest part. So here's the deal. This is the scenario. I'm up here with the goats. I just called him. I just called in a bull. He came across, and he's standing right across the road over there. But it's 50 yards, and I made the stupid mistake. And he's staying there long enough because I got the goats around me, and he's not quite sure what the heck that is. So um, he's staying over there. It's probably about 50 yards away. Do I shoot? Well, in this situation, I do. Normally, I don't. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this over there on the berm and then that's what I'm going to shoot at so you guys can all know what I'm shooting at. Okay, so it's about 40 yards. And you guys saw the little stick that I stick up, stuck up there. That's what we're gonna be shooting at. He's just coming across here. The goats are still chowing around. I got two different um, weights on the front here. So a couple of my arrows are shooting lower than the other two. He's standing there, he's standing there. Oh, and I shot low. That one probably went right underneath him, underneath his chest. Um, like I said, a couple of these have heavier uh, tips on them, like by 100 uh, grains, so it's a little bit different, but he's still there though. Oh, and I got, got close. Uh, that one actually could have been a kill shot, but this is 40 yards, so 40 yards is a pretty good shot, especially if flu flus. Now these are these are 150 grains, so they're a little different. Yeah, see how much closer that is? That's like within two inches. 
Come on. Come on, Joe, come here. There it is. The shot. I finally got one in him, but um, he's still standing there. We might as well give him another. Oh, and I shot completely over. I don't know what I did. I pulled that when I was thinking too much. But you see how good this this kind of uh, training is? Um, shooting, and we're still waiting. That squirrel's still up in the tree here, but we're uh, we're out here. That was 40 yards shooting with a stick bow, and that last one was a flyer. I don't know. We get those. We get those flyers, and hopefully that never happens on when you're shooting at an animal. You get, don't get a flyer. Come on, guys. Okay, scenario's the same. The goats are back here. They're uh, picking, rubbing. Sound like a herd of elk. So he's coming up over and he's just kind of looking at me and he's, and he's not gonna even pick me out when I start pulling on him because I, we've been uh, just picking and he thinks we're elk. Oh, and I just heart shot him, 40 yards, heart shot. Can you see it out there? <laughs> see, now he's still standing. I ain't heart shot him, but he's still standing. What the heck? Better put another one in him. Oh, I, I put another one in him, but it's a little bit further back. Still probably got the back of the lungs. But still, like at 40 yards, this is not something I normally do because of that. If that was my first shot, I'd hit that sucker way back. If he lunged forward, I'd really hit him in the paunch. So, but at 30 yards, that tightens up to about that much, which is still killing. All right. One of the, one of the things that I've found that's helped my shooting a ton is starting to shoot a tab rather than a glove. There's um, several reasons to shoot a tab. The first reason I think is as a hunter, especially maybe not so much as a arch as a um, target archer, but as a hunter, is you still have your use of your hand. You still have this hand here. Um, it, most tabs, there's a lot of different types of tabs on the market. Some are more advanced than others. I have come up with wanting just a simple tab. I don't even like having the plastic in the middle bef in, in between them anymore. Um, get away from my camera. Anyhow, um, one of the big things that I like about just these simple tabs is all you're doing, all you're really doing is protecting your fingers. That's all you need to do. Um, unless you're shooting like with a gap or, or a, a string walking or something like that, you don't need a special tab. I like something that has some feel to it. This is a two layer. I make three layers and two layers, but this is a two layer. And all I'm doing is I'm just, I'm just protecting my fingers. And I like the tube layer because it flops out of the way really quick. Now with the tab, why I think that they're better than shooting fingers, and I shot fingers for years. I, I would not shoot a tab for years and years and years. And the reason that I think they're better is if you look, the tab itself keeps all your fingers coming off the string at the same time. And what I mean by that is um, the more surface area you have here, it's flat, it's a flat surface area that pushes your fingers off. When you release, it pushes your fingers off of it and you don't get a dragging finger like you would. I used to get a dragging finger. This finger used to drag on my release with, a, with my um, glove and that affects the arrow flight. So I started shooting tabs and my, my um, release got to be way more consistent. And then I went through a series of different tabs and I finally came back to just this plain old piece of leather that goes across. Now, I do like the hair on the front. Um, I'm trying this one out just to see if, if I don't need the hair on the front because I wear those out pretty quick. You wear the hair off of them. Um, but, and then I am going to do a three layer too. And so I've started to make these and, I, and I've started shooting with them. And I'll tell you what, this is the most um, 
the simplest tab. I actually call this um, the kiss tab. Keep it simple, stupid. No, that's not what I named it for, right? No, I named it to actually say keep individual stump shooting um, because it's a very inexpensive tab and all it basically is doing is protecting your fingers. It does help you release too. Now, um, another thing that I like about a tab over gloves is gloves, you're always having to put it on, take it off, take a drink, you take it off. This, I just I just use it and I, it is, it's always right there. And if an elk comes, I'm right here and I'm just, I'm on it. And if you look how I engage, that's just how I engage with the tab and I can feel that string. So I, I know where that string is. And if you watch, I'll slow, slow motion this, but if... How that comes off, even just the tab just not even pulling it just slides off of there really good and it does a good job i'm going to shoot a couple shots for you i'll slow motion and and you guys can watch the tab or my release work All right, guys, that squirrel, um, he must have took off or something somewhere. Probably do a few more scenarios up there, go up and set a more, couple more cameras, so there's a lot more to do here. I don't know how many animals I'm going to see with all these other animals with me, but it's, uh, well, mainly the dogs. These guys, I think the deer it wouldn't bother them a bit. But, uh, like a worthy target right there I think I'm gonna do a cross hill scenario and I'll shoot across this hill probably about 25 yards and uh, I'll go stick there's a piece of blue ribbon I'll go stick a piece of blue ribbon on there so you guys can see where I'm shooting at that way you guys can tell whether I'm um, practicing good or practicing bad but uh it's so far a success the goats are pretty good about shooting the dogs are probably less than the goats, but I'm going to shoot right at that and I'm going to do a cross hill just like I called him up right up out of the basin like that. I got somebody up above me and we got that good, good thermal that's coming straight up. So those elk, when they come up, man, they never catch you until they're past you. And if you got a collar up there, that's where they're going to. And you get them, they come up through from the bottom here and then you just give them a stop them and then you let her fly and that's what's gonna that's the the scenario and see that blue flag right there i'll just take a piece of that flagging off and i'll put it on that stump and you guys can see where i'm shooting at we're gonna shoot for right there i don't know if i can see the blue from back there but we're gonna shoot for right there <laughs> These goofy goats. so i'm gonna grab my bow go back there He's pretend like he's coming up over and uh, yeah, I think it's going to be a good deal. So get away guys. Go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Okay. The scenario is that elk came up. Buddy's calling up above. We got the perfect thermals. And that elk has stopped at 20 yards right there. So I got one shot at this. So one shot, this is the one shot. This is always good to do when you're stump shooting too, is just take the one shot like it's a regular kill shot. And so you can see the stump behind me over there and the blue spot in it, that's, that's his heart. hit just a little high but I killed him I still killed him I'm still about 
three inches high from the heart so I would have been a pass through on lung but uh you guys see how important this kind of training is this is this is not just going out and having fun this is training this is training for the real thing I'm in a pole here I got goats around me Cole was coming across bugging me I got that flag flag going up and all these things are things that you have to deal with when you're out hunting so this is the best kind of training you could do for yourself this is not just playing this is training so i'm gonna go pick up that arrow we're gonna head back down the hill see if we can find some something down there i got two cameras to set up i know where i'm gonna set them up and i'll set them up on the way out and uh we'll we'll probably shoot one more scenario so this is the hardest part about taking your goats hunting come on man get off get off of those no not those get off of those the hardest part over 90% of the people that watch our channel aren't subscribers so if you're finding some value in it we're meaning to bring you um, all sorts of how to's and how to get into traditional bow hunting tips and uh, we're gonna continue to do that we're gonna go back through our how to bow hunt series and we're gonna bring you a bunch of stuff so if that's something that you like subscribe and then hit that bell and you'll see every video that comes out you'll know what it is and uh, I'll try to term them so you guys could use them as a library and I'll put them in a playlist because I'm going to go back through and redo uh, my traditional bow hunting 101 series to kind of help with some of the questions I got out of the original series. So if you guys do that, subscribe. There's an icon right down in the bottom of the screen. You can just click that right now and you'll subscribe and then hit the bell. There's a bell and it, that way you know when the next video comes out. All right. All right, I'm going to We're set gonna up a dying. camera in this little benchy area. See if we can catch that spring bear that comes through here. Starting, the sun's starting to go down, so I'm going to have to get out of here. But uh, we got it set up with help from a uh, bow there. He wanted to lay down in front of it. And then, yeah, of course, all of them have to help. So, But we got it set up. Um, I'll, I'll be periodically coming back and checking this out. Bo wants to take a nap. <laughs> The sun is starting to go down, so I'm not gonna have another shot. I gotta get out of here. I got a couple more miles yet. Um, so I probably won't get another scenario in today, but thanks for watching and stay tuned. But other than that, guys, I hope you enjoyed the series. I hope you enjoy what we are trying to teach and trying to get out there. We got some things in order. I got a scorecard for stump shooting that I'm gonna get out. I haven't got it completely done yet, so. Um, and, I'm, and I wanna get a group of guys up here and videotape us going through a whole session of that so um like i said subscribe hit that bell and uh we're gonna get out of here